Welcome back to Tuesday morning. We're live, large and in charge on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Now, this week from the 22nd until the 28th of April, we observe World Allergy Week. Mm. And the focus of this year's campaign is atopic derm dermatitis, oh. uh, or more commonly known as atopic <laughs> eczema. I should have just started with that first, isn't it? Anyway, it's an extremely debilitating and common condition. And joining us to discuss the topic, along with allergies in general, our resident, Dr. Darren Green. Signore, very good to see Signore. you, sir. Good, good morning. Good to have you. Well, Thank doctor, you. Let's start off with this year's, you know, I don't want to say theme, but this year's um, topic, uh, atopic eczema. What exactly is that? Yeah, so atopia, <laughs> it sounds so dramatic, but it, it actually refers to people that are prone to influences of developing the, the what they call the, al the allergic march. The march from hay fever mm -hmm. to allergic rhinitis to eczema and asthma. So that spectrum of disease associated with things and allergens that can trigger obviously those different systems yeah uh, people that are more prone to that uh, have an atopic profile mm -hmm. and atopic eczema uh, that you asked about uh, refers to the skin okay. specifically and eczema can be debilitating and really really tough and on parents tough on children tough on self-identity and good self-image mm. and what happens is that the skin is the largest organ in the body by the way but the skin cells don't don't fit together uh, tightly in mm -hmm. someone with atopia uh, and what happens then is you are prone with the influence of allergens to have a histamine and a, an IgE, an antibody-mediated response, when you have an overactive or eager beaver immune system, it overreacts oh. to a trigger that it mistakes. And you can see, you get then that, ex that eczema, those red raised <laughs> patches that are brought about due to that, uh, that immune response to the trigger. And sometimes the body even uh, misinterprets a preservative, for example, as a serious organism or bug trying to attack you and then it launches a bad attack back on the preservative for mm -hmm. example in mm -hmm. a fizzy cool drink or a, or a chips or whatever it might be yeah and that then leads to these uh, these symptoms so I have clearly, a friend, yeah. yeah that whenever she eats sugar just in between her fingers she, she just starts. gets yeah and all the it's itchy it's a chronic yes. irritating rash and as you know in, in and it often starts in infants uh, 40 percent of infants are now affected by eczema yeah and that's one in three basically wow so what exactly triggers it where from one day you can go from being completely normal, your skin yes. is fine, next thing you know it's itchy and then ah, what's so, going on? So when we speak about atopia or atopic dermatitis or eczema, it means that it starts in childhood already. So you're born with the uh, modulation issue in your immune system where you have an over-exaggerated response. 15% uh, of sufferers are, uh, have a genetic uh, uh, link or if, if your parents had eczema, for example, you've got a 40% chance. Oh. If no one had it, you've got a 15% chance anyway. Okay. okay. So, just so uh, for, for parents. So, yeah, w what actually happens is that, is that you, you, you have environmental triggers, mm -hmm. so things that are in the air as well. You have then topical soaps. You have things like food triggers as well. Okay. And even exaggerated responses to insect bites. You often find kids have major responses to even a mozzie bite where they have this huge, large pustule that forms after being bitten. Mm. Okay. And that's because of the immune system obviously overreacting and flooding the area with, with all those chemical substances. Okay, oh. well, we're going to be back with Dr. Darren Green as we continue the topic around allergies, specifically focusing on atopic eczema. So if you've got a comment or a question, feel free to call us at numbers 021-430-9881. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Well, we are back with Dr. Darren Green as we continue our conversation around allergies as it's World Allergy Week. Mm. And this morning, we also were focusing specifically on atopic eczema. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Darren Green, earlier you were telling us what it is, what triggers it, how can you treat it? Look, There's that. the trigger right there. <laughs> oh! Some people, some people, some people, some people have uh, <laughs> triggers, obviously, to horse, cat, and dog dander, which are the dry skin cells. Mm -hmm. The most common one we all know is house dust mite, which is in your mattresses and pillows which you need to try and minimize exposure to by mattress protectors, sprays, airing your mattress in the sun, etc., etc. Uh, you don't actually have allergies to the down itself. You have allergies to the house dust mite that's living in the down pillow. And that's what people also forget. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so... How do you treat it? Well, I think you need to remove the trigger first. Okay. So identify the triggers lies at the center of this whole thing, because otherwise you're just treating it symptomatically and it's just coming back. Okay. So you need to find out, be tested properly, uh, get the right blood tests at the right age and stage of your life. Is that life. the one where they prick you multiple times? Yeah, that's and just, then put that's like the, 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 the skin prick essay that you're yes. talking about. Yeah, there's some more advanced ones now as well that mm -hmm. they add that they can look at. 
even for things like penicillin allergies to antibiotics, for example. Okay. So a lot of that uh, is happening. But we, we treat allergies basically according to where it's at. If it's a local thing, like atopic eczema, obviously the skin will need to be, will need to be uh, treated because if you don't, you could run into complications. Okay. Um, the skin is an organ and a barrier that we said. And if there are cracks and dry scales that appear, it exposes you immunologically. You are exposed to the outside environment and you're laid bare for infection to enter. Oh. So the skin barrier then cracks. You have then bacteria that can move into those cracks and cause secondary infections of the skin and soft tissue called cellulitis. That's why when it comes to eczema, you get different types. You get dry eczema and wet eczema, which they even call weeping eczema. Mm. And it's really, really, it's painful. There, there's scabs and crusts with cracks in them, etc., that okay. later can become infected. So you need to approach the trigger first. Symptomatic treatment would depend on whether it's dry or wet. Uh, we tap dry when we've washed or showered with the, with, with the specific um, uh, soaps involved, hypoallergenic, non-allergenic soaps. You need a decent emollient in the water when you're bathing a baby, for example, with enough moisture in it that doesn't have perfumes, etc., etc. And there's a lot to be done. But uh, some great information on the, uh, the Allergy Foundation of South Africa's website for okay. those that can't get all this information now. Okay. Okay. Well, We've got a caller yes, on the line, Helen, from Vereniging. Good morning, Helen. Hi, Doc. Um, I have a question for you. I'm a pharmacist, and that's just by the way, so I'm always investigating different things. But I'm allergic to every single hair dye. I have dark hair, oh, no. and it's, I don't know if it's actual pigment in the dye, but do you have any advice for me what I can do? Even if I've treated myself with, cord uh, with corticosteroids before and allergic tablets, I still seem to get a reaction. Any, qu any answers that's or suggestions? That's a really me. tough one. That's the first time we've ever had a, an expert to expert kind of oh, conversation. Oh, wonderful. Like that. wonderful. Love this. Thank you, Helen. That, that's so, it's, it's really, really tough uh, because obviously it affects the physical uh, appearance and the hair is important, mm. uh, obviously. So the issue there is in hair dye, there are many different things. There's uh, lots of chemicals from... Uh, in certain cases, the peroxide that you use to strip the protein off the hair before colouring it, you'd know more than yes. I do. <laughs> That's enough to hear the uh, and then the highlights, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there are lots of bonding agents uh, uh, and chemical substances in that. Uh, then they do add things like lanolin-based products to the hair products to nourish the skin again and replenish the moisture. But you know, in this case, there's so many things that you could be allergic to in a in a simple hair application yeah. that one would have to actually go and look at the, those contents. And I mean. I'd recommend for her that she sees uh, someone that is an allergologist. Um, and there's cool. some really good people uh, with the Allergy Foundation of South Africa that yeah. she could email. They might have had patients with a similar condition. Mm -hmm. And the process would be by one of elimination, really, and obviously prepping. In terms of colouring your hair and looking at other alternatives, I'm sure there are lots of new products that look at natural ways of colouring your hair, and I think that's also on the horizon now. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll get back to that, uh, Dr. Darren Green. So stick around. When we come back, we speak about keeping your children super healthy. Uh, but is it good if you're keeping them away from all the dirty stuff, trying to protect them from allergies, or does that uh, kind of compromise their immunity? So stick around as we continue our chat. 0214309881. It's my feel-good breakfast show. It is indeed your Feel Good Breakfast show. Thanks so much for joining us on this Tuesday morning. We're talking about allergies because it is World Allergy Week mm -hmm. and we would like to get your calls and comments and questions. Give us a call on 0214309881. Dr. Darren Green is in the house. Uh, let's talk about antihistamine. And oh, yes. what exactly is yes. antihistamine, its relation <laughs> to allergies and how does it work? Sure, so histamine is the chemical substance that gets released once your whole allergic response is triggered. Yes. So your body makes antibodies, and an antibody binds the, the invading pollen or the bee sting toxin. The antibody connects to it and then calls in the cavalry. And when it calls in the cavalry, cavalry it actually over, it over calls, it calls too many people yeah, yeah. to the scene of the crime, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have then flooding of chemical substances like histamine. The effects of histamine on the skin would create that itchy effect. You know that oh, itchy. Okay. So when you've been bitten by a mozzie, the histamine rushes to the site, makes it red, swollen, and there you start scratching away. And that's what histamine actually does. And antihistamine is what everyone knows as people speak about allergics every day. 
that's one of the older ones. There are newer ones now that, keep, that don't make you sleep because they can be very sedative. Some parents love allergics uh, and sedative antihistamines because it makes their children sleep. Why does it happen? <laughs> it's, it's the effect of where it binds and which receptors, and the sedative effect of medication basically is the balance of those receptors and how they stimulate the nervous system. Okay. So when it comes to antihistamines, you now have ones. The expensive ones are the ones that are non-sedative mm -hmm. in most mm -hmm. cases, and that's why you're paying so much for the product, so you can work during the day on it. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so you can take antihistamines when you know you're going into an area where you're going to be exposed to mm. things that trigger your allergies. Like dog or cat allergies there you go. if you're visiting me. <laughs> um, we have a caller on the line. I believe it's Leho from Pretoria. Good morning. Morning. Morning, Dr. Green. Morning, What's your my comment or question? question? Uh, my question is, if you are lactose intolerant, is it because of allergies? And if, can it be treated or can it, can it go away um, with time? Okay. Great Good question. question. Great question. So l lactose intolerance is actually an, an inability of your body to handle uh, a certain enzyme in milk, lactose, mm -hmm. in, from lactating mm -hmm. uh, in, in the gut. And mm -hmm. what happens there is if you have the shortage of that enzyme, you could try uh, and up, your, up your, your intake of your probiotics and prebiotics to normalize the gut flora mm -hmm. to assist with that process. But in general, nowadays, we even have genetic testing that can demonstrate people that are more prone to lactose intolerance. Yes. And then you know you should stay away from those products. Mm -hmm. In terms of, 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 of treating it and in terms of curability of lactose intolerance, Diet modification is obviously right at the top of the list because of the symptoms that go with it. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, one would certainly look at follow-up sequential serial testing to see how diet affects the environment of your gut. So a lot of work being done on that, on the sensory nature of the gut and how it actually responds with its own little control center locally instead of the brain being involved. Mm -hmm. So watch the space, and I think there's going to be a lot of exciting new research coming out in the next while All for right. our listener. Okay. Thank you. So we'll be back again with Dr. Green just uh, for one more little chat because I really want to talk about this thing of trying to keep kids overly clean oh, and wash, whether wash. that's a good thing yes. or not. So stick <laughs> around with us. We'll be back with the doctor. It's my feel-good all right, we've got a caller on the line to engage us on our chat about allergies. Christina on the line from no. Johannesburg, yes? It's Christy. Oh, Christy, Hi. sorry, Christy. Hi. Good morning. Morning. Um, okay, so my question is twofold. I'm going to go quite quickly. Um, so firstly, what are the most affordable ways for somebody that's dealing with eczema to kind of manage it? Because I know the oil must be quite expensive. So what's the most affordable way to manage that? And... Secondly, so I've got the entire allergic to asthma, sinusitis, eczema. Mm. I want to know if that's um, genetic. So if not, will my child eventually get that in his, you know, early teenage or adult life? Okay, hmm. thank you for that. So traditionally, I spoke earlier on about the allergic march, which involves hay fever, allergic rhinitis, eczema, and then asthma as well which are the combination of conditions that where there's overlap and in causology in terms of the triggers. She asked the question about whether a child will get allergies. Yes, they do. Uh, your chances of having eczema uh, from parents that have had eczema or in allergies or atopia is 40%, 40 to 80%. So okay. it starts at 40%. If no one's had uh, allergies in your family, 15% is generally the, the, the term you use. So, at the moment, one in three children have eczema. Mm -hmm. okay. That's how hectic it is. And there are different reasons for that. Okay. okay. And Christy also asked, how can she manage her eczema? Yeah, so firstly, you need to identify the triggers, modify your environment, the triggers, whether that be your diet, your environment, your bedding, your home, etc. That will all need to be looked at okay. in detail. And then medication-wise, obviously, you'd look at, at preventative medicine. You'd look at things like your antihistamines, nasal sprays, if she suffers from sinusitis, a, a chronic spray. In terms of the skin, you'd look at, uh, obviously, cleaning the skin properly with a non-perfumed or a hypoallergenic uh, type of solution. And then emollients, uh, you know, within a, a short time, within three minutes of bathing, tap drying, for example, not rubbing because it aggravates the skin, tap drying and then applying the emollient or mm -hmm. the, moisture, the moisturizer back into the skin 
is useful as well, preventing those secondary infections. And then finally, uh, is there proof in the theory that uh, this obsession that we have with hygiene is contributing to the rise of allergies because children aren't able to build a strong immune system or a strong enough immune the system? The germ hypothesis is what mm. we refer to. Yeah. So uh, the, the emergence of antibiotic resistance and us overusing antibiotics has also led to a, to, to, to a similar thing where our immune systems are dysregulated. Uh, there's also a lot of work being done on whether, whether vaccinations and the amount of vaccinations in the first 24 months of life affects your immune system going forward. Regarding germ hypothesis, you should allow your children to play. You shouldn't over-obsess about uh, hand, hand cleaning and sanitizing the hands. If you think about it, they can play. They can walk around uh, on the grass, etc. What is important is before eating a meal, wash your hands. And 10-second rule, does that apply if you drop the food and you pick it up? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you think about the, the amount of bugs we, we get from other things uh, without washing our, our, our hands, uh, you certainly don't die from, from touching the ATM. Okay. I want you to see, I want you to 10 second rule the way Bob was sitting. No, I, 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 my, my personal, I hardly nice. ever get sick. My Must personal nice. rule is 10 second rules <laughs> and if it's in public, five seconds. Be nice. <laughs> Dr. Darren Green, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. <laughs> thank uh, you, and of guys. course, the allergyfoundation.co.za is where Great you can site. find all the information yeah. as we are observing uh, 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 allergy, World Allergy Week mm -hmm. between the 22nd and 28th of April 2018.